Welcome into another episode of Just Another Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Just Another Chris. And today I have a lovely conversation with the one and only Ribsy. You may know him best on YouTube. I met Ribsy, aka Eric, over at Bullicon, New York City, a few months back, and I just had to get him on a podcast. Such a cool dude. He's a film photographer known for his street portraits and amongst other things. We have a lovely debate about pack film. We talk about the instant photography community. Is it toxic? We touch on Policon in general and in the extended version of this over on Patreon, AKA the Spitfire Club, we even talk about a rib recipe and how ribsy makes his ribs and amongst other things because yes there is extended versions mostly uncut versions over on patreon honestly this episode is in the, my top favorite conversations that i've done so far it is so good i had a blast talking with eric aka ribsy so without further ado let's just dive right on into episode 20 of just another podcast enjoy <laughs> ribsy what's what's going on man how's it going aka eric I didn't, I didn't even know your 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 name act to be honest until yeah, yesterday mean, now now everybody knows my government name so thanks for <laughs> putting that out there appreciate it uh, uh, things, are good, man. things are pretty good I'm, I'm in really good spirits nowadays recently because um i just got my dark room set up here in this basement that you see me in so yeah i've been printing color negatives for the last couple nights and i've been uh it's been like a uh a month-long process of thinking about what was the best way to do it and for those that are watching slash listening because this is a video and audio podcast uh why don't you introduce yourself a little more properly like who, who the heck are you what do you even do <laughs> everyone probably mostly knows me from youtube um i started a youtube channel right before the pandemic so well technically it was already the pandemic but right before the like the western world got went wild <laughs> so it was, i started in february of 2020 four years almost later, well, more than four years to the day. And yeah, that was kind of me documenting my analog photography journey. We've been doing photography for mad long. So yeah, probably since 2013, I think, is when I bought my first camera. Um, I bought a Canon T3i. Shout out to Canon <laughs> T3i. Uh, not a sponsor. So I started digital <laughs> photography. Yeah, not sponsored at all. Um, yeah, I started digital be. photography. And then it wasn't until maybe five years ago that I ever picked up a film camera. And the only reason I did it was because I, I was shooting Canon digital and I had all these Canon lenses. And then I had the Eureka, which is stupid because it's not a good Eureka, but I had the Eureka moment of, oh, I can put these lenses on old film cameras and then, you know, <laughs> and shoot wide open at F, you know, one, two. How cool is that? So that's exactly <laughs> what I did. I just bought like the first Canon film camera that I found online. Uh, it was the EOS 650, which Ooh. happens to be the first EOS film camera that was ever made. I had no idea, but that was you know, a piece of history, 1987. Anyways, bought that camera, put slide film through it. Again, I had no idea what I was doing. I just went to the store and I was like, that box looks cool. I'll take that. It's like yeah. Fuji Velvia or something. Sure. And, um, and then, yeah, I was spending 20 bucks a roll to get developed and printed and put on a CD. Yeah. Scans. There you go. And anyways, I'm rambling now. But the point is, that's how I started getting into film photography. And then from there, it just exploded. Mm -hmm. um, so everything I was doing in the past with digital cameras, I basically replaced with film. And now, I would say over the last two and a half years or so, I've really focused on street portraiture, which has become what feels like a life calling in some corny way. But um it's the artistic photography that i'm doing that i really find valuable and that i think yeah you know over the next bunch of years maybe 50 years who knows how long um <laughs> i'm excited to just build a big body of work that has like some kind of resonance in people's minds um yeah, yeah. so that that's me photography outside of photography i have a nine to five i work in advertising on the on the technology side there you go you know, i'm not that that's, that's about it. It pays the bills and it, it allows me to shoot as much film as I want. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of people I've talked to, uh, I've had on the podcast and asked them like a lot of like other YouTubers and stuff and, or not just YouTubers, but other people that shoot instant photography more specifically, they got into it right around the same time as a lot of us did as well. Like the pandemic, that's like 
kind of interesting because yeah, it's probably the most it, it, it we had a lot of this time and a lot of, we were going outside more right but uh, it's kind of interesting with the, we're struggling for money but we're going to spend money on film uh you know <laughs> but anyway that's a whole other topic uh, going back a little bit uh to last month when we first met in person um and that was at policon uh, and that was really cool. And so I kind of just want to know, you know, get some of your thoughts and feedback from the event itself. Because I, it was the first time I'd ever been there. Have you been there before? I, yeah, I went to Policon last year. Yeah, so I'm from New York City, born and raised yeah. in New York City. Um, I'm from Washington Heights, uptown in Manhattan. Nice. Uh, but I've been living up until very recently in, in Bushwick, Brooklyn, for on and off for 10 years. Because um, I went to London for a while. That's where YouTube started. Oh, uh, nice. But yeah, I went last year. And it was great. It was in a different facility, so it was kind of a different feel, a bit cozier, yeah. um, which was good, honestly. It, it was all good. Um, and then that went really well. I met a ton of people, which is what I really like. Moving back to New York City, I was like, yeah, I want to meet mad people. Like, I had a great network in London when it came to film photography, and I really wanted to develop that here. Um, so I went last year, went great, and I was like, I'm definitely not missing this ever. And then this year, of course, it happened again. And um, this year... It was in a different style of venue, which I think worked really well. Um, this was kind of a big open warehouse with just lots of space to roam around. Um, and I think that the team that put Polakan on did a good job of creating little kind of stages in that big open warehouse so that you could have like different things happening in different places. Yeah. Um, yeah. And of course, all the studio lights, everybody's got all these crazy instant cameras. So you really just get to play around and um, I mean, I, I I had an absolute blast. Like yeah. I completely enjoyed it, um, especially because it was so convenient to me personally, being <laughs> that it was like in my neighborhood. Sure. Um, but honestly, like, there's probably things I would change just to make it even that much better. But there was nothing yeah. that was terrible that I'm just like absolutely not. You know, they they need to figure that out. Yeah, there's anything and everything, even the best and greatest things. There's always room for something better or room for growth or making things more enjoyable um i i have been to policon bay area this year and then i went to policon nyc uh, i i'm i live in portland oregon so it's literally across across the entire country to get there and it was so much fun i had a blast and one of my biggest concern not i shouldn't say concerns one of my biggest um i don't know what the complaints i guess might be the thing prior to even going to any of these over the years because people would be talking about it and i'd say i don't know because i don't ever see anything come out of these as far as like social media posts or videos or advertising of any kind so yeah. i've i was le i would say leery but maybe a little bit leery spending all that money to go to these things i'm like i don't even know what it is or what to expect and they have done a huge improvement with that, which is awesome. Uh, there was loads of stuff coming out of the New York City one, more specifically, uh, this last this this past couple of months. I feel like there's a major step up from the the previous year, even though I think that was last year was the first year they ever did it in New York, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, normally, it's either no, in... oh last year, yeah, yeah, last yeah. year I think was the first officially like productized yeah. version of it. Yeah. Uh, but but that crew has always been doing you know all yeah. kinds of stuff kind of amongst themselves yeah and they're awesome i, I love i love them all they're so much fun um i'm not, sorry i'm blank her name i shouldn't because she was on my podcast i had the instant film society on here uh several months ago laurel I think, laura laurel i think her, it's either laura or laurel there because there is a, there is a laurel and a laura and i can't remember which <laughs> one's which <laughs> but you, got both. you get credit yeah, yeah yeah she um she was like the runner of the, making sure everything was like going yeah. she was phenomenal um she's just a really cool person everyone there was so cool meeting new people and i'm definitely going back uh next year uh, i want to go to the west coast one the west I've heard i've heard great things and this year i was like tempted to go but it, it was just not a good time yeah. too much things going on on my end but I want to prioritize it because what better way to travel to random cities yeah. to just go hang out with other, you know, film nerds, you know? Yeah. 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 So it's interesting you bring that up because when I went to San Francisco, I was sort of ex not expecting, but envisioned what New York was, where it was inside somewhere, a convent, all these people hanging out, portraits, workshops, all this sort of stuff. And then, so when I went to San Francisco, it was not, it was just 
photo walks pretty much uh, for the most part, for the 90% of it. And so when I was going to New York, I was expecting, okay, I'm, I'm going to be walking around New York. It's going to be crazy. We, there was, there was some of it, but, but not a lot. It was only the last day that we were there. We went out and did some stuff. And so that was interesting. So if you go to the San Francisco one, be prepared to walk because we walked the whole city. And it was, it was, it was a blast. Um, I did, ha- did have a good time with that one. So I was talking with Kyle while we were, um, at the event, Kyle, uh, is Brooklyn film camera. <laughs> Let's just say that. And one of the coordinators for the event there, I was talking to him about w- ways to make it even better. Cause he came to me about like, what can we do? And I'm like, well, Hey, how about this? What if we may open it up to virtual people, people that can't make it there? Cause I have a background in virtual events and sort of stuff, uh, live streaming and whatever, all that sort of stuff. And so there, there, there's, maybe we could work something out like that. So if you're somewhere around the world, right. That you want to go and watch some of these workshops or watch some of the, um, the, the keynotes because in fact Polaroid was there this year talking about the brand new black and white film, which I want to talk to you about that. Um, and you can't get there. Well, this may be an opportunity for you to do it. Now, this is not an official announcement of any kind. I have no authority <laughs> over this whatsoever. However, it, share right now, yeah, right? I know, I know. I probably shouldn't say anything, but whatever. Um, However, it, th- th- that's where my head's at. And I want, I want to bring this whole thing to everybody. That's just kind of where, how I am with community and stuff. I want to bring people together and be able to get people to come to this, this thing because it was a lot of fun. If you can't get there physically, I would love for people to still be able to join in somehow. Do you struggle with finding a way to display your instant photography photos, such as Polaroid or Instax? Well, today's podcast sponsor has heard your cries and has you covered. That's right. A Little Home has a great lineup of acrylic, high-quality frames for Instax Mini, Square, Wide, and Polaroid, and Polaroid Go all fronts they have you covered quite the variety to choose from too these things are absolutely incredible i genuinely love their products any longtime listener or subscriber of my youtube channel knows i don't just put anyone in front of my audience i'm very careful about that and this company is fantastic best part is they're offering you a 20 percent off your entire order yes just use promo code 20 just chris at checkout and you'll get yourself 20% off. And even better, they're on Amazon. Yeah. So if you're a Prime member, you get free shipping. Oh, and if you're having trouble finding where to put the code, so when you're at checkout, just click on your payment information and it'll pop up a window for you to be able to insert the code. Links can be found in the description to their products and be sure to use that promo code and save yourself 20% off your entire purchase. 20 just Chris. Now back to your regular scheduled programming. Let's talk about the new black and white film from Polaroid real quick. I know you just released a video. I just released a video. A lot of people did actually. Lou, uh, Sweet Lou Photography, he just dropped a video on it as well because uh, we were all there getting to witness it firsthand. What are, what are your thoughts and experiences with it after the event, outside of yeah, the controlled environment? I have very positive thoughts overall. Um, during the event, I got to shoot one pack. Um, and it was just like, like, um, what's her name? Hattie from Polaroid. Mm-hmm. She had a ton of it that she was using for the demos. And she just had like an open box and was like, here, you want it? And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> um, so I shot it in the controlled setting. And it looks beautiful in a controlled studio environment. When, you, when, you, when the dynamic range of your scene yeah. is, let's say, I don't know, six stops or something. And this is unofficial. I'm just making these numbers up. <laughs> but, you know, six stops is probably half as much dynamic range in a scene as like what you would get from what you would expect to get in like a digital, a modern digital camera or something. Um, when you're, when your dynamic range is that contained in that, in that range, the, the film just shines. It gets every single one of those stops adequately. Um, and your highlights don't go crazy. And like, you get like really good, like subtle detail and shadows. Um, so I was like, okay, this is fun. I could definitely use this in the studio again. Um, and the, Pairing it with the i2, which just makes it so easy to shoot. Because that camera's amazing. Um, even though it's plastic and, like, basically a digital camera. But anyway, <laughs> pair those two together, and, and it's just a really positive experience in a studio setting. I was like, all right, let's buy a bunch of this. Let's try it outside. Because the studio's one thing outside is, is the real game changer. And like I said, I do street portraiture. I want to take this outside, and I want to shoot it yeah. in whatever lighting I'm in. doesn't matter golden hour, middle of the day, like above the head sun, 
cloudy, you name it, I want it. Um, so I took this to the parade, the Puerto Rican Day Parade in Bushwick, and it was a very sunny day, but with a lot of clouds coming in and out. So you got harsh light, and then you would have like just kind of soft, you know, cloudy lighting. But then in New York City, you got buildings, you know, that are pretty tall on either side of the street. So if the sun was over here, hmm. then this side would be completely shadow yeah. versus over here where the sun is shining directly onto the building and the people and whatever on the same street. It's just kind of divided in half. So my goal was to see how I could manage that um, for portraits, but also for the wide scenes where you had all of that going on. And my opinion is that the film handles those kind of scenes, first of all, way better than it used to. <clears throat> yeah. I think that no one can can argue. The film can handle a lot more dynamic range, <clears throat> especially when you have like super, super bright highlights versus super dark shadows. Yeah. It's not going to capture all of that, but it's going to give you a more pleasing kind of roll off between all of that. Um, so that's first and foremost, my comparison to the old film. On its own, objectively, as a black and white instant film, <clears throat> my opinion is still pretty high of it. Um, I, I think that it looks nice. So if you move away from the technical stuff and forget about <laughs> stops or whatever, blah, 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 I personally think it looks nice, especially when you control your highlights. Um, yeah. Some people prefer to expose to the shadows. At least back in the day they did because the film didn't retain much shadow detail. Yeah. But I think blown out highlights are ugly. <laughs> um, one of the beautiful things about shooting film, especially negative color, negative film and black and white film, ne just negative film in general, the highlights in negative film just get digested so well by the film. So even when you overexpose stuff and your highlights go above kind of that that threshold, the film just kind of controls it a bit and makes it look pleasing um, other than you just blatantly overexposing your whole picture. So when you control that on instant film, I think you get a similar style of look, but you have to control it, meaning, I guess, exposed for the highlights. So that's what I do. And yeah, I just like what I got. So for me, it's it's two thumbs up and, you know, excited for this to come to the color. Oh, my God. You're using what a Mac. Sparkles and fireworks. <laughs> You're using a Mac. You just got outed. <laughs> that's a Mac thing. <laughs> that's impressive. Uh, anyway, two thumbs up <laughs> for... Yes this film yeah i think um yeah it's awesome and I, I to be honest though i'm not really one that should people people should come to for like the uh, seal of approval on it because i'm not much of a black and white film shooter uh, uh myself um mostly because the stuff i had shot in the past that i thought it looked like trash and so i just never went back to it um but now i'm i've been shooting so much more even outside of the monochrome uh special edition frames which they say is the new chemistry I'm getting the same results even from the, the the stuff from February or March production date of uh the, of Black and White film. I'm getting the same exact results. Um, heck, some yeah, I saw that in your video. I, I was surprised by that. Yeah, and even even the stuff that they directly handed me there, um, I was getting some. I was getting those results. So like, pitch black, pitch. I don't want to say pitch white. That doesn't make any sense. Bright white and pitch black. Super like almost like Instax level black and white, like super contrasted. Um, I was getting, I was getting some killer shots with it. So I'm like, Ooh, I think I'm gonna start shooting black and white film more. Uh, and this makes me excited for what else could be coming down the line, uh, with maybe their color film. Uh, maybe they're going <laughs> to start doing better. The stuff that they were giving out at the events, the color specifically was coming out amazing. Now the, I shot a full pack in controlled lighting though, uh, in the studio. So that's something that needs to be <laughs> a dr or told disclosed. Yeah. I should, there you go. Um, but super punchy, sa like saturated, sharp, like really, really nice. And so that's good. And I didn't see any of the spider cracking thingies in the corners of the film, uh, from that pack. Um, yeah, I don't that, think that's the, that's the annoying thing about the Polaroid stuff is when when something happens in the developing process that goes wrong, um, it just it looks it's annoying. I don't know. I I'm gonna say something semi controversial. Do I it. really don't like the look of messed up instant film. Mm -hmm. So for example, there's a lot of people shooting peel apart film, the expired stuff. Like me, right? And now. a lot of it comes out. Like I'm not gonna say it looks like shit because that's an opinion. <laughs> what I will say is a lot of it comes out looking 
very blatantly like damaged or incorrect compared yeah. to what it was supposed to look like. Sure. And obviously it's expired and you have no idea how it was stored and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, there's no surprises there. You know, yeah. obviously people know that this can happen and probably will happen. But I just don't like the aesthetic, <laughs> especially if you're going to pay, you know, $100 for a box. It's just not, it's not cute. <laughs> well, yeah, it is true. I don't know. Um, uh, I don't. I don't feel attacked or anything like that. But I do have a series going on right now as we're recording this. It's dedicated to pack film. Uh, but yeah, I'm shooting stuff that's wildly expired and stuff that is never going to be made again. So you get what you get. Uh, exactly. you just have fun with it. But I know what you're saying. Like a, gr- a prime example would be the one instant stuff. Um, I feel like because they're technically making it and you're spending yeah. way more per shot than even buying expired Fuji FP100C, but you're not even guaranteed a photo and it looks like trash. Sorry. <laughs> I appreciate what you guys are trying to do, but it's not uh, for me, maybe just for me, it isn't worth it to p- spend like, was it $40 a shot or something like that? Uh, and you can, I, th- yeah, I think that, you can, that, that number is just. <laughs> and he, and then I think you can only buy them in three packs. I think I, I can't remember. I can't remember. It's a lot they of money. Well just like, like I respect. You know, I'm not trying to be a hater because I what they're doing is is completely novel. No one, yes. literally, no one else is doing it. Sure. And they're they got all the odds against them. So <laughs> I respect it. I do too. But at that point, it just feels like I, I just might as well just send them the money. You know, it's like, I don't even want <laughs> just the photo. It's like, here, I support what you're doing. Here's my hundred dollar donation. Like, you know, at least, at least you won't be disappointed after you send them a hundred dollars. Whereas if you spend a hundred dollars on film and you don't get any photos, you're going to be really disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Sadly. But I respect them. Like I said, I, I want them to succeed and you know, maybe I should send them a hundred dollar donation. Just I haven't you. bought any of the film. <laughs> the thing is, though, as, as as sad as this is going to sound, they're they're basically destined to end anyway because they're using old stuff. Like they they have like a giant roll of expired film already that that'll run out, and then they're not like producing the film. You know, they're they're and I believe they're taking um, Polaroid eight by ten, um, uh, the car the uh, the chemistry. And they're putting that into that. They're combining something, which is really cool. Don't get yeah, me yeah. wrong, but they'll run out, and then that's it, and they're over. So it's not like they're innovating something brand new and starting it. I could, I would definitely be funding it in that case. Just be like, here you go. But it's like yeah. I'm giving this money for something that's probably going to disappear tomorrow, and not gonna. I, I don't know. That's that's my two cents. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel you. I, I don't know. We we can go on and on about this. It. Which is useless, honestly, because right. you know, <laughs> it's not coming. But if, if, if I just don't know what the warlords over at, at Fuji like don't understand in terms of it's either we don't understand and we need to really just shut up and never talk about this again, right? Or they don't want money because if they came out with this stuff fresh, people would pay fifty dollars for ten sheets. Yeah, for, for ten shots. Right, they'd pay seventy dollars for ten shots. They'd probably pay the hundred. They're paying it for the expired shit. So why wouldn't they pay it for the fresh right. stuff? Right, like there is money here, yeah. lots of it. Because once you get a taste, like if you ever shoot a pack film <laughs> shot, yeah, that yeah, comes out looking properly, yeah, like somehow it, it didn't break down over the time that it's been expired. Yeah, it looks so damn good yeah. in color and black and white. So once you experience that one time, you just want it again and again and again and again. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's Which a high. Means, it's like economics 101. It's like, what kind of product do you want to sell? The kind of product that requires people to buy it over and over and over and over again. You know what I mean? So the money's there. Clearly, they're not doing it. They must not be doing it because they can't. You know, I think that's yeah. what's been said publicly. And that's probably true because <laughs> if it's not true, then what the hell are they? Why don't they want the money? Well, so here, here's my my, my two cents. I, I, every single day, I get comments on my videos about pack film. Why isn't it coming <laughs> back? Every single day. So maybe this is I, I, maybe this is where I should address it. <laughs> I'll clip this and put it online. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> but the thing is, yeah, they're a business they, to make money. They like money. That's their whole reason to be here. So there's a lot of factors here. One. They, like you said, they can't, right? 
but because maybe there's just not enough money there to, to warrant the cost to make it. And two, maybe since they stopped making it and now, now the interest is back, right? Now maybe more people are wanting it. And they're like, oh, actually, maybe we should bring this back because maybe we can start making more. Do what you said. Maybe sell it for $100 a box. But I have a strong feeling that they were grandfathered in to some sort of environmental thing with their chemistry that once yeah, they yeah. stop making it, they can't make it anymore. And so they basically would have to reinvent the wheel and it would never be the same as the old stuff. Kind of like what Polaroid's having to do or had to do with the Impossible Project. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have heard about that, the, the, the chemical aspect of it. There's ingredients in the chemistry that are basically illegal now yeah. because they're terrible for the environment. So yeah. I, I respect that. But um, it, I, let's just say this. If I came into Elon Musk money, <laughs> like one of the top line items in my agenda of what I'm going to do with my <laughs> billions, that is one of them. <laughs> I'm going to house homeless people. I'm going to... <laughs> You know, what other problems are there to fix? I'm going to fix some of those. And I'm bringing back Pacville. <laughs> Ribsy, for, Ribsy for president in 2020. <laughs> was it 2020, next one will be what? 2028? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I, I like where your head's at. I like, uh, I like your, your, what your thoughts there. My, uh, my other thing that I've heard, I haven't really, to be honest, looked too much into it. I should. I'm doing enough of these pack film videos in the last month or so. They should probably just look into it. I think they've literally dismantled the machines. Like the machines are gone. And I don't think there's people alive anymore that know how to build them again. So they probably have to like reinvent the wheel basically. And that would cost but Is this harder than building an airplane? Sorry to cut you off, but like this is the one part of the discussion that annoys me. <laughs> and it annoys me extra because I'm not a mechanical engineer. Like I know nothing about building machines. So <laughs> When I say stuff like this, like anybody could easily just be like, shut up. You don't know anything yeah. about what you're talking about. And that is 100% true. I don't know anything. <laughs> but <laughs> making film should not be more difficult than, than like trying to create carbon capture technology to like help with climate change. It shouldn't be harder right. than building airplanes and fucking rocket ships going to the moon right now. Like there's so many really like quantum physics that is harder than than um than making film right it has to be right or yeah. or is it what again like i don't know what i'm it, like it, i'm not an expert i don't know shit i should right. shut up and, we're, we're and both talking. right we're both <laughs> not experts in this field however i will say one thing it always comes back to money how much money is someone willing to spend on making spaceships to go fight alien wars right it's like you just you gotta have the funding. So Fuji's like, do we want to drop fifty million dollars and create this thing that we might see a return on in like forty years? No, <laughs> you know. So I'm not, this is just random numbers. Don't quote me on any of that stuff. But it's kind of like maybe if they spend fifty million dollars and get it back in three or four years, they'd be like all over that. It's like, oh, cool, it's a quick investment, you know. But and also, who knows how long it would take their teams and engineers to like retry do all this stuff and do. They're focused on other stuff where it's making them money. You know, that that's that's really what it is. Like the, the, we the we, thing we forget we're also forgetting here is that Fuji they don't even want to make negative film. Like yeah. regular color negative, regular black. They don't want to do that. So why the hell would they do pack film? You yeah. know what I mean? Right. And um, and then that's a great example. And also they probably are just some company like a smaller company it's like they probably have owned other ones that that's where their main money is at then it's not even in film they'd rather just get rid of their film companies use that all that space and resources to make their money else do whatever else they've got going on well they should officially do that then like sell off all the film assets to whoever yeah. wants to buy that stuff um because it's just it's just annoying and you know this is what i've learned like People have interests, right? All kinds of different interests. So there's us with film photography. There's other people with guns, other people with motorcycles, other people with you know, whatever. Um, inside of each one of those communities, people feel personally attacked by the decisions of the companies that they're <laughs> buying stuff from. So we're no different than all these no. other communities. And I, I... sometimes it feels like we are especially, you know, ungrateful especially like you know feisty and and just annoying and entitled and we probably are but 
yeah. it's just it's annoying when a company that you rely on especially in, in this world because there aren't a lot of options Mm-mm. it's annoying when like they just don't give a shit about you um like i want them to sell as much stuff as possible to the chinese companies that they work with because those chinese companies at least they're like "Ooh, we want american dollars so we're gonna you know sell the shit and make it and keep <laughs> selling it yeah. A Fuji doesn't even seem to want the, the currency. Like, I don't, I just don't get it. They're so disinterested. And you're right, though. Food, like the film division of Fuji, specifically consumer photography stuff, yeah. is probably this big. Yeah. And Fuji as, an, as a global corporation is probably this big. Yeah. So, you know, again, you're right. It's all about yeah. dollars and cents. Pretty much. Yeah. And, and then also, because we're so passionate, kind of what you were saying, like, we're so passionate about, you know, this hobby and this craft. The average person is, like you said, passionate about guns or motorcycles or whatever, right? And they may be like, oh, cool, film photography, ah, Polaroid. And they pick up an Instax camera, right? And it's like, oh, it's a Polaroid camera. Let's take an instant photo. And they might shoot 10 photos in like three years, right? Those, but the crazy thing is those are the ones that are probably keeping them alive because there's more of them than, than us, yeah. the ones that are passionate about this. We're not the ones keeping them alive. That's the yeah, crazy yeah. thing. Like same with Polaroid. You know, we're the ones that want the stuff, but they're like, yeah, well, you're just, you're just the little annoying little mosquito that's flying around and we just swatch you out of the way. And there's all this. <laughs> yeah. The real consumers are the people buying the speakers, the Bluetooth speakers. Yeah, the speakers, yeah. man. That's what's keeping these things alive. It's not us. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're just the crying babies um, in the corner, basically. But yeah. Anyway, that's. That was, good. That was a fun conversation. I like it. <laughs> it was it was it was like a therapy session, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. And yeah, everybody. Pack film's gone. Sorry, it's, it's just how it is. Let's, yeah, let's deal with stop it. Stop talking about it. <laughs> I, I'm never gonna stop talking about it. It's too good. I'm just mad that when that shit was alive, well, it, it wasn't alive, but you know what I mean. I'm right. mad that when pack film was like completely normal, yeah, accessible, all around me. Didn't I didn't even it. know what it was. I didn't, didn't know it say, existed. Same same and it literally was everywhere yeah. for ten dollars yeah or whatever it was fifteen dollars yep. and i missed it completely missed it it I, didn't yeah. exist in my life how same. anyways let's I, move on this is this is this is gonna turn ugly <laughs> <laughs> and on that note <laughs> Oh man. So anyway, yeah, going back to me, uh, your YouTube channel a little bit. Um, talk to us a little about what what you uh, your main stuff that your bread and, your bread and butter. Is it just the street photography stuff, street portraits, like you were saying? Yeah, or I do you bounced got around. A ton. Um, my goal when I first started the channel was to grow the channel, so I was like doing everything, um, anything that I could possibly make a video about, I would just do it. I was making like three videos a week. <laughs> Obviously, pandemic, you know, we had a lot of time. Blah blah blah. So I, I, I was literally doing all kinds of stuff. It was a bit of a diary for me, like all the new stuff I was trying out in my like learning experiences. Yeah. Those would go on there. Obviously, gear reviews, stuff like that. And then there were some of the like come with me as I'm outside taking photos kind of thing. Um, I was just doing it all. Nowadays, yeah, I went through the same cycle as everybody else where like you start to like get mad because like the videos, people don't watch certain videos and you're like, what the hell? And then like you know, get focused on numbers and blah, blah, blah. I've gone through all those cycles. I've taken breaks from YouTube now. So fortunately, I, I grew a nice audience. Um, and there's people who like genuinely, you know, like listening to me and <laughs> and care about whatever I'm doing. So shout out to all those people. I do appreciate it a lot. Um, nowadays, I'm more focused on, I'm trying to like showcase my, the photography that I care about. So I don't, so, for example, I don't randomly just go out and take photos for the sake of a video. Mm. Um, it's more the opposite now. It's like, okay, I'm going to go do photography on X day for X reason that I care about. How can I just document that enough so that I can then talk about it? Yeah. So switching that around for me was huge because um, I, I personally didn't – like, I don't want to be – there's just tension between being a YouTuber and being a photographer, <laughs> yeah. being a YouTuber and being whatever you are separate from YouTube. Um, and especially in the photography world, a lot of people talk a lot of shit about that. And I'll admit that some of that has got into my head. So part of it, I think, is justified. The other part is just more of a, 
being self-conscious thing, but like I, I do think I'm a photographer first and foremost, and I do think that I have an artistic vision, and I do think that like there's value to what I'm doing. So I want that to to have some sort of center stage. I want people to see that and value it. Um, and oftentimes, when that shit ends up on YouTube, it becomes, um, I don't know, people judge it differently. It doesn't get respected. It doesn't get taken as seriously. And, and I'm just speaking from my experience. Other photographers, maybe people think they're amazing. And no matter what they do, it's all good. But for me, I feel like um, I really wanted to like carve that lane for myself. So nowadays, the focus is on me kind of bridging classic YouTube where you're just making videos about stuff, especially things that like are relevant and people want to talk about, hmm. like new cameras, new new film, whatever. I'm trying to bridge that with my experience as an actual photographer. I, I even say hang I even hate saying actual because I feel like I'm throwing shade at so many people, but um I, I, I want to marry mean, the gear and, and you know the blah 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 like the, the YouTube kind of game with mm -hmm. my practice of photography as an art form there put you it go. that way there you go um and it's been nice doing that because now i i know why i'm doing stuff and i'm not really competing with anybody or myself um i just take what comes with it so if i make a video about the photos i took last weekend that i thought were great you know if if two to four thousand people see that video um it's all good and two to four thousand might not sound like a lot to some people. It might sound like a ton to some other people. Yeah. Um, now it doesn't matter as much because at least I know that the photos that I put out there I care about. Yeah. It's kind of worse the other way when you're just like chasing stuff and and you know doing whatever you can do just to like make the video and then the video bombs or or people just don't respond to it or you know yeah. you don't get any kind of feedback that you think is good. I think that experience is way worse than me just doing what's true to myself and putting it out there and how people receive it it is what it is yeah and that that's interesting because you know one of them is is true to the heart in, in a in a way and you would mm -hmm. think that people not responding to it would like really you know be like a dagger to the heart but for me it's more about an authenticity thing i feel yeah. like i'm authentic, authentically putting it out there and that to me makes me feel better than <clears throat> doing something inauthentic and getting like you know 20,000 views or something. I don't know. But yeah, I, it's just, it's been a process of trying to like come to terms with like what I want to do and how I mm -hmm. want to do it as opposed to just like chasing the game of YouTube. The numbers, the view, chase some views. That, that's, that's, that's awesome. I, I think, and I'm, I'm totally Vic, like I was this way, the exact the same way where when I first started, it was, it was about getting the views, getting, getting all this stuff. And I was chasing whatever like was hot at the time like in the olden days it was peter mckinnon gotta be like peter mckinnon gotta be like matty hapoya we gotta do we gotta buy the one wheels we gotta buy the gorilla pods we gotta do all these things and you lose yourself in in that and then that comes across in your videos you're not being your real self and it wasn't until i just just erased that stuff from my memory stop watching a lot of these cr these creators <laughs> to be honest and just start recording and being myself and that's the moment i did that the views came the audience subscribers came like everyone the more naturalness of it all just just fell into place you have to be passionate yeah. about the thing that you're doing or making otherwise one you'll burn out or it'll just come across in your videos or come across in your yeah. in your photography or whatever if you're not true to what you like it's not gonna work you can't Im pretend to be somebody else um got a couple audience questions if you are uh, open oh, yes to it. <laughs> uh, just a handful just a handful again if you want to answer any of these don't Let's kick it off with Bebop D Punk. They ask, uh, thoughts on photography in Miami? Yeah, so shout out to Bebop. I forget his real name, but I met him in Miami when I was hanging out <laughs> up there a couple couple months ago. Um, I think photography in Miami is very interesting. Um, so me personally, I enjoyed, for me, it's a new place. I don't live in Miami. So going there, I have this like set of fresh eyes. And culturally, I think the way people move and talk and look and dress and all of that is very different from New York City. So um, mm -hmm. being able to interact with, with that 
culture and 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 obviously photograph it um it's very entertaining um and and you combine that with like nice weather basically every day even if it rains like crazy and an hour later it'll be nice again you have a lot of opportunity so i really like that what i find interesting about miami is like there's a lot of um different styles of photography going on there you've got you know you've got all the the, the, the hot girls there's that whole <laughs> section of photography yeah. you've got the cars there's that whole thing then you've got like the the events and then you've got a lot of like the the sunset beach that kind of thing um there's just a lot of different things you can really le lean into and it seems like there's a good community in miami like people get together have events and all that so um overall like i'm i'm, I'm very positive on on the ph photography scene and experience in miami um and like one of the close friends i've made in miami shout out to depot fellow photographer so there, there's there's good energy in the photography scene over there um mm. And it seems like film photography is it has a bit of a, a, a foothold there. I don't know how big it is, and it, it's I get more vibes that people like shooting digital over there. But you know that's based off of no data, so <laughs> it is what it is. But yeah, <laughs> thumbs up. Let's see if we get more fireworks. Two there it is. Up. There we go. Two thumbs up on the Miami scene. Nice, <laughs> you Mac user. Um, <laughs> here we go. Here's a good one. Here's a good one. It's a uh, some hot takes are about to probably drop we'll see okay. uh some of them we've already kind of talked well we've talked about some but here we go silly ghosts asks uh what's your biggest polaroid pet peeve from polaroid itself or from the community slash other uh, the community doesn't like straight up i've had zero bad experiences with the community um so nothing bad to say about the community it it, it feels like the film community at large, I would say. Yeah. Although way more positive, like something good about the polar community is that there's a lot less of the the, the, the toxic bullshit. I feel like, um, so that you know that's that. Yeah. Um What was the other part of the question? Yeah, just your biggest pet peeve with Polaroid. Pet peeve in general. Yeah. Um. I, I saw so I'm on Threads nowadays, <laughs> and I read a lot of stuff on Threads. I feel like. And this is a completely biased thing, but I feel like the moment anyone creates a YouTube channel and makes any content on YouTube, they're instantly put into this bucket of like YouTube photographers. Yeah. Um, and then there's all kinds of hate thrown at them. It's like YouTube photographers suck this, blah, blah, blah. They do this poorly, they do that poorly. And I'm not going to try to defend YouTube photographers because obviously I'm biased because I'm quote unquote one of them and you know whatever <laughs> but i just think it's weird that like posting a video about your photography on youtube gets you a lot of hate or criticism or like it's a field day you know for people to just lean on you like lay it on you but if you post a photo on instagram you know you're you're not this weirdo social media whatever you're just a random yeah. person who shared a photo on instagram yeah to me, it's all social media, so I don't understand why one of them gets like open season for people to just go nuts and like criticize you, and the other one isn't. Um, and like, not everyone on YouTube is like a career YouTube person. You know what I mean? Like, some people are like you and I. We just like fucking showing off whatever we're doing and talking about shit. It's not like we're this like YouTube identity thing. You know? I don't know. Yeah. I, I hope that makes sense, but like. People no, just love the phrase YouTube photographer. And I'm just like, what's the difference between a YouTube photographer and a Flickr photographer and an Instagram Flickr. photographer and a photo, whatever that new app is that is in beta that I can't get in. <laughs> like, it's all social media. Like, it is what it is. Yeah. And then people also, like, always shit on the influencers. And granted, like, I get it. I understand that, you know, there is a, a transactional aspect to it. But, like, people don't choose to like a lot of people don't choose to be an influencer they're just making shit and if people yeah. like it and subscribe and the, and the audience grows like you know that is just what happens so yeah. I like I, I don't i'm not trying to like you know be some i don't know i'll stop there but i <laughs> i just find it annoying like the random no everybody I, thinks I, we're all peter mckinnon or we're all like you know these huge youtubers and we're just right. not I, it's, it's, it's that's a great 
That was a great insight, to be honest, because I remember the first time I uh, got a sponsor for my YouTube channel uh, for a video and people lost their minds. They're like, Chris sold out. He's over, blah, blah, blah. I got all this hate all because I did a, I, I had a little sponsor on, on my on my on my YouTube channel. And I'm, I'm like, dang. But then I, I do videos that I'll spend thousands of dollars on like of my own money and people are like oh cool yeah this is great why aren't you doing this every time every time i'm like well i need a sponsor sometimes to be able to do these types of things and so i get that the community i want to i want to bring up one little thing for the, on the community the community for instant photography specifically um has been amazing like i've only had one instance with um uh, something weird that i won't, won't go into uh, here at least yet, but not, not uh, yeah. Anyway, but, um, I've been a part of a lot of communities and various hobbies and crafts over the years, and I'm no longer in those communities because of the communities. So toxic, they got egos. They've got people that are just like, like just think they're better than everybody else, you know, type of thing, or that it's their opinion is more important than yours. You should be doing something this way, which is their way. And instant photography has been pretty much the exact opposite. They're just like, let's just hey guys, let's hang out, let's go have some fun, let's just go take some pictures, you know. I'm happy that you're you're echoing that because um, yeah, I, I I didn't think about it until you asked me earlier, and I was like, wait a minute, like I have had nothing but exceptionally like positive experiences. Sorry, I got some moisturizer in my eye. No, it's um, okay. But even with like the the quote unquote regular film photography community, like right. People, people talk like the Pentax, the new Pentax camera that came out. Like, I think when people express opinions, mm -hmm. whether they're negative or positive, like that doesn't have to be toxic. And I think sometimes people just the moment you say anything negative or contrarian, yeah. like it's like oh ne negativity, bad. And I'm just like nah, like it's an opinion. Yeah, we're totally allowed to disagree. But if I tell you that you're a punk ass bitch because you like that camera like yeah. that's negativity you know that's, what i mean but right if i say oh i don't like that pentax camera i don't understand why they made it like i'm annoyed you know i don't really consider that like a toxic point of view no uh, no I, I wouldn't it's called passion like we, we clearly care about this you know thing of analog photography so people have passionate ideas and um if you're being respectful then I think that that's fine. Yeah. Um, if it was in person, I probably would have said the same thing in like maybe nicer words because you know we all have Twitter fingers nowadays. Everybody does. <laughs> it's true. Everybody. I don't care who you are. Like if you if you say that you're not strongly wording things on the internet because you don't show one because yeah you're lying. You do. <laughs> Everybody does. It. But you know it's just the internet. Uh, in person, you don't talk the same way because there's an in person interaction. But yeah, yeah. I, I think. Discourse and, and disagreement is not negativity or toxicity. No. And, you know, that line I feel like people need to deal with. I saw it recently with the Pentax thing. Like, so many people were like, oh, this film community is the worst. Like, we can't have anything. Well, And I'm just like, bro, people disagree. Like, it just, that's how life works. Yeah. Um, so, anyways. Yeah. I don't, think it, I don't think it's as bad as people say. No. Um, and that's my point of view as a dude. I know that. I've heard plenty of women say they have very like annoying to like negative experiences in this bro community, and like I'm not surprised um, that that like that that happens in so many different places, not just film photography. So yeah, you know, want to call that out there, but yeah, no, yeah. that's totally valid and great that you point that out. <laughs> um, just, yeah, I'd be missing a whole chunk of the the audience if. If I pretended that that wasn't a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, more bros than than what do you call them, sisters? I don't know what would you call. <laughs> it seems weird to say, but I don't even know if there's more bros. Honestly, there's just more bros talking shit on threads and on Instagram. True. Yeah, I guess um, that's what I was getting at. <laughs> but like in real life, there it might not be that way. Um, yeah, because even at Policon, there was so many yeah. so many sisters if you want to call them that i don't know maybe but, that's why policon and the polar community it's, it feels so much better is because mm -hmm. whatever they're doing has made it a natural place for everybody to kind of be part of it as opposed to just bros so having more than just bros there 
probably makes it feel way better. <laughs> yeah, that was a blast. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's not. I'm not trying to get philosophical, but hey, anywhere where it's just a bunch of dudes, eventually it's gonna fucking dissolve into chaos. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's <laughs> a great. Need, we need more than just bros in there, you know. That's for, exactly. You keep us in check. Um, last last audience question before we wrap up comes courtesy of Third Ghost Photography. Uh, large format instant film making a comeback worth it spoiler it is <laughs> so shout out to elliot um that's who that is um i've never shot it but it's it's a thing i mean we saw it at policon yeah um it looks really cool it's cumbersome you know it's got all the intricacies that like a lot of these like large format things have but people like it um it's expensive as hell. Yes, it is. Because <laughs> like, I want to get involved in it, but it. <laughs> but at least you get fresh dollars. film, and at least you, you you can, you should be able to know what to expect with with the shots. I saw the black and yellow stove, like the monochrome yellow. That's yeah. what it was at Policon when I saw it, and you know it's funny. There's a lot of things that Polaroid sells that I'm just like. What the hell? Yeah. But I'm not the target audience. I get it. I'm some <laughs> ogre. It's all good. The black, the, the 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 monochrome yellow, like I wouldn't buy it. But when I saw it on the eight by ten, I was like, oh, yeah. that looks fly. So yeah. maybe it was the eight by ten kind of thing that just kind of caught my attention and, and got me yeah. all excited. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that I'm assuming there's other eight by ten film that's not the you know the monochrome yellow stuff. Yeah, so, they got both. Yeah, it's cool. I, I probably will never get into it no. just because you, it's all this gear you got to get. And, like, obviously the film itself costs a lot. But having to haul around that, like, printer-looking thing with the rollers and, like, you yeah. need an 8x10 camera and blah, blah, blah. Like, the film. I think it's fun. But, yeah, it, it will, I don't think it will ever become part of my process until one day I'm like, you know what? I'm bored of everything. I need something <laughs> random new to do. <laughs> we have that Elon Lust money, like you were saying. Yeah, exactly. 8x10. Feel yeah. apart, baby. <laughs> Going back to what I was saying earlier, like my priority is my artistic, uh, like point of view through photography, yeah, and stuff like that would just be for fun. Like I don't think it would it would fit into my process because um, I need to be a bit more nimble. I need to be able to like shoot a lot. Um, I need quick turnaround. Like all of that feeds the process that I'm going through. Um, it'd be cool as hell though to photograph people in the streets with a big camera like that, which That'd is why I bought a large format camera for a four by five. Yeah. But um, eight by ten, four by five is already annoying enough mm -hmm. from my point of view. Eight by ten would just make that more annoying. Add to that instant film, like you know. Forget and it, I like man. to give people shots in the streets. Like whenever I use for Polaroid, for example, yeah, I'll take two. I'll take one for me, one for them, and I'll usually do two different compositions, and then you know just kind of like I'll keep one without you can't see it because it takes so long to develop. Right. So I'll just give them one, I take the other, and like it is what it is. You can't do that with this eight by ten instant fill. You know what I mean? Like I'm not yeah. giving you a forty dollar photo. <laughs> you know <laughs> exactly. Like, that. I mean That's even mine. Even Polaroid, regular Polaroid, that's that's pretty uh, Elon Musk of you to uh, yeah, give it's away. Like $2 a shot or something? It's like, well, I think it's, of... it's getting closer to 3 bucks a shot these days. Oh, wow. I just really enjoy when, like, the reaction people give me when I give them a photo. Oh, yeah. Um, that, to me, is a nice cherry on top. Especially because, like, the vast majority of people that I photograph, um, well, not the vast. I would say half and half. Half the people I photograph on the streets. I don't get their contact info because, you know, it's just moving too fast right. and, or I'm like trying to go to the next thing, blah, blah, blah. So they, they might never see the photos, especially if I never post them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's that experience where like someone gave me their time and like their energy and attention for, you know, at least two minutes, if not five. Um, but they got nothing in return for it. <laughs> so right. the other end of that spectrum is. I will shoot on my medium format camera the way I normally do have the interaction, whatever. And if it's going, you know, if I, there's a nice rapport, I'll be like, hold on a second. I got a, I got a special something. I'll pull out the Polaroid camera or the Instax camera, depending on what I'm bringing that day, and be like, hey, I got instant photos here. I'm going to give you one. So let's take a couple more photos. When I give them that photo, they're just like, damn, this is cool. 
and and they're just happy, you know. And like in New York City of all places, that shit doesn't happen, you know. Random people doing something nice for you, like for no reason. Right. I mean, there is an exchange, but like you know, it's not money. It is, you know, it's just more of a, a personal satisfaction. So yeah, I have both ends of the spectrum. So for me, it it just like balances itself. It makes me feel good about what I'm doing. Um, I wish I could give more people photos that I've taken of them, especially the stuff I've shot on medium format, which yeah. is where I truly think like I'm expressing what I want to express properly. Um, but you know, it's just it's a fact of life. It's not going to be possible. I do get a lot of people's contact information, and mo- most of the time, for those people, I'll send them the scans um, on Instagram or whatever. But like you know, Instagram butchers the scans. It's not going to be like great quality, and yeah. it's not a print either. People usually just repost it on on their Instagram and then they call it a day, which is cool too. But um, I'd love to give people prints. That would be that'd be amazing, and it would be a lot of effort to do that. Even if it's just one person out of every twenty people I photograph, it still would be a lot of effort. But now that I'm darkroom printing a lot again, I think if I get if, if I'm printing some things that I truly feel are like fantastic, yeah. um, I might go through the effort of, of reaching out and saying, "Hey, what's your address? I want to send you something." So long segue from eight by ten instant film, but it is nice to give people physical images. Uh, people really like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Anytime I've given away photos or, or am able to, cause depending on like you were saying, the situation sometimes doesn't work out. They're just like mind blown. I love doing it to kids. Kids just don't understand it. <laughs> and like, look, yeah. and it's like, like, especially like Instax. I usually do those with kids cause it's faster. Their attention spans are very short. So I'll shoot them. I'm like, here you go. And they're like, there's nothing here. I'm like, just watch. And they, they get to just watch it appear. And it's like, it blows their mind. I think it's just like witchcraft. <laughs> it's crazy how something that is like, pretty simple i mean it's it's just chemistry you know yeah. they figured out the chemicals that go together to give you a photo something so simple from like a technology perspective could be so foreign to like people who live at the same time we do right uh, it's not like it's only you know 15 years ago maybe that this stuff like was like in its prime pretty much so, yeah the fact that there's people on this earth that have no idea what that when what that felt like when it was normal, that's mm-hmm. pretty interesting. Um, What's even interestinger is that kids are I've seen TikToks of these kids getting vintage cameras and they're just like point and shoot digital cameras like little pocket things and I'm like vintage <laughs> this yep. was like last year i thought but no really it's like 15 20 years ago like th- like these were the cameras i had in high school they're just like digital cameras i'm like now yeah. kids are thinking that's the coolest thing i'm like whoa that now i'm into film which was cool then it's like different generations find their 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 cool vintage hipster thing that they like <laughs> we we our generation i'm assuming we're a similar age i'm 35 34 okay so Millennials, I think we are our our life experience is probably like one of the most interesting life experiences for any generation. Absolutely. Because we truly got to experience the world in two fundamentally different ways. Yeah. Um and most generations I mean everybody experiences transitions, but like yeah. the transition that we experience is monumental. <laughs> yeah. Like it fundamentally changed the course of like humanity, and may, you know there, there'll be more of that at some point, maybe sure. with the AI stuff. But um, yeah, like life before iPhone and or mobile phones in general, before social phones. media, like we were before I, well, social I media in general. Not about that, yeah. Social media and mobile phones, mobile computers. They're not. Yeah. It's not even the phone. S- smartphones, they called them. Yeah, <laughs> like those two things are humongous, and we're, we're biased. Obviously, because you know Here we are. we're talking about our experience, but I, I would, I would, I would entertain an argument with another generation to be like, "All right, tell me what transformational things you were talking about, and let's see which one was more impactful to the course of humanity." <laughs> right, right. Maybe the television <laughs> yeah. to some of the people. We, I don't know. We, we knew life with Polaroids and 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 you know, one hour photo places. Right. And we also know life where I, I took a ton of photos of us on this live chat earlier when we first logged in. And I saw them immediately. Yeah, no, just instantly. It's the true instant camera. 
really is. <laughs> well, uh, before we wrap up, any final thoughts and things you want to drop on us? What do you got cooking up? Anything fun? Um, I'm just, for me, this year is about prioritizing my photography as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, the, the artistic stuff that I keep talking about lately. Yeah. So um, that's my focus. And it means, you know, choosing to do that versus not doing other things. And that's just how it works. Um, so that's that. Um, in terms of new, exciting things, like I said, I, I bought a house in upstate New York. So I think at some point there's going to be um, some new types of photography mm. that will become part of my, like, experience. Less of the street port. Well, street portraits are always going to keep happening, no question about it. But I'm going to start to do some other things, like landscape photography, for example, something I want to do. Did a lot of it in the past when I shot digital and then kind of abandoned it when I started shooting on film. But I bought a 4 by 5 camera, so I'm hoping to take that out and do some slow, landscape-y kind of stuff. The trees and mountains and abandoned stuff. You know, the, that whole neck of photography that I'm not really part of. So I'm excited to dive into that a bit. Um yeah. And I mean, I think I think that's it. Yeah, focusing. I'm, I'm just trying to focus. If I learned anything meaningful in, in the last couple of years, it's that um, photography or any art form, like it's it's all about effort and time. Um, if you do not go outside to look <laughs> for the photos you want to take, you're just not going to get them. <laughs> that's just, it, it's just basic truth. Like you can't do it if you don't go. So making time for it and getting up and, and going, like, that matters literally more than anything else. It matters more than any camera. It matters more than digital versus film. It matters more than whatever talent you think you have. Nothing matters if you don't get up and go and do it. Yeah. Um, so that's my lesson for the day. That's your words of wisdom. Welcome to the Masterclass. Welcome to the TED Talk. Thank you so much. Exactly. Appreciate it. Well, where can we find you on the interwebs? Yeah, so we got YouTube. The channel is Ribsy, R I B S Y. On Instagram, I'm Ribsy with two underscores after the Y's. So R I R I B S Y underscore underscore. I'm on Threads, talking some hot <clears throat> shit. So go find me on there. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm vaguely thinking of, or I've been lightly thinking about doing a. Uh, what is a sub stack? Like one of those newsletter oh. things. Okay. Just something different to, to keep me entertained in between YouTube videos. YouTube videos just takes a lot of effort sometimes. Yeah. Whereas I can just sit and write sub stack anywhere. There just, you go. And then clean it up and post it later. So awesome. Um, just, I don't know. I think it'd be interesting. Um, that'd be fun. I but yeah, that's where that. you can find me. Awesome. Well, at least some links. I'm, I'm, yeah, at least some links. Say, I don't live in New York City anymore. So you can't find me there, but I live just <laughs> outside of the city. So I will be in the city a ton. Um, obviously, like I said, doing a lot of street portraits. I got to go back to New York City a lot. There you go. So I'm there. I just don't live there. And now my life is a bit more peaceful. And there you go. <laughs> God, the city. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate you. Maybe we'll have to have you back on during like a live stream or something where people can ask questions live or That'd something. Be fun. Yeah. That oh, would yeah. be fun. Thank you. Thank yeah, you for man. having me. Anytime. Um, this was a lot of fun. Anytime. Ooh, man, ah, I need to get him back. We need to do like a live stream or something. We got to get him back on the channel. Maybe do another podcast episode. We'll see. I don't know. Something has to happen. That conversation was so much fun. Love talking about his thoughts about the community and loved hearing that he shared the same thoughts about the instant photography community as me. It's such a positive environment and it's so refreshing to be a part of this community. Because like I said, I've been a part of a lot of communities in the past and it's just just so toxic a lot of pretentious people telling you what to do you need to be doing it a certain way something's better than other i just not i just don't like it instant photography is so welcoming and that's one reason why i love it and i love you guys and don't forget there is an extended version of all podcast episodes over on patreon help support the channel help support the show and get a lot of exclusive stuff not just the podcast <laughs> you get monthly photos sent to your door there's 24 hour early 
ad-free videos, bonus episodes, and just so much more. But I think my favorite thing is the monthly Zoom calls that we do. Yeah, every month we sit and chat. So if you want to join in all that, there's a link in the description or head on over to patreon.com slash just on the Chris. And be sure to check out Ribsy and all his adventures. Links are in the description. But that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I'll see you in the next one. Now, get out there, make some art.